Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to Abido, where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and we enjoy it one nibble at a time. Mm -hmm. And currently, we are obsessing over The Mandalorian Season 2. Before we get started, just wanted to remind you guys, we are doing that Apple podcast review slash rating giveaway. So if you're on your Apple device or listening to us on Apple Podcasts, give us that review. We're going to pick lucky winners. We'll give them little goodie bags, stickers, exclusive stuff before we release it to the general public. So, yeah. And also don't forget to hit subscribe because for some reason the new episodes don't get, they get released at 5 a.m. But if you're not subscribed, you won't get them in the morning unless you're subscribed to tricky, us. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also take a look at our brand new website. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Abideofpod.com. You can find it if you scroll down into the description. Doopy 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 doop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, recap time? Recap. Season 2, episode 1, The Marshall. So, last episode, we got to see our favorite duo of the Star Wars galaxy, the one and only Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. I was like, Cobb Vance? That's <laughs> no. Favorite? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, we got to see them in the premiere of season 2. Uh, and really, we have joined uh, Mando on his quest to try and reunite Baby Yoda with his kind. And in order to do that, he feels that he must must connect with more Mandalorians. Mm-hmm. Which are, I guess, hard to find. They don't have a Facebook or a, you know, group message. So <laughs> No, <laughs> no, you'd think they'd at least have a WhatsApp or mm-hmm. something, but mm-hmm. absolutely not. So he goes to an informant. He finds out that there might be a Mandalorian on Tatooine. He gets there. Uh-oh, it's Timothy Oliphant instead. And they have to kill a crate dragon. Mm-hmm. And then we get a big surprise at the end with uh, apparently Boba Fett looking on and being like, dude, you got my armor. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. For real. Uh, but really where that leaves us is the fact that this one lead that the Mandalorian had is now dead. Mm-hmm. It's a dead end. And that brings us to, spoiler alert, because <laughs> we're just about to get into the second episode. So if you have not yet watched it and you don't want anything spoiled, do not listen any further. But if you have, well, then let's get on this thing together because it is time for a bite of The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 2, The Passenger. I'm always wary about titles titled the passenger because just from my experience reading sandman that's like a terrible like issue arc because it's just so sad and disturbing and i was like oh no every time i i don't know it's just just something that's programmed in my brain yeah (laughs) and as we know i have a problem with the passengers movie (laughs) so it's just scary for both of us we join the one and only Mandalorian. As he is riding through the desert, we're thinking back to Peli or something like that because he's got all his crate dragon meat packed up. He's riding fast. And then we see some dubious figures trying to set up a trap, a little trip wire in the middle of the desert. It seems like there's some child seekers out there still. Mm. We're reminded that in the series, there are people probably tasked by Moff Gideon to get the child, because remember, this child is somebody that's of high importance, especially to the Sith. And so these guys set up a trap, they set up a little tripwire to get him. And I, any time in this fucking show, any time that Baby Yoda gets dropped or left or rolled around, oh. I, I freak out. And I think that's the point. And everybody is just, when they saw his little speed bike, crash and then baby Yoda goes tumbling yes i was like no why okay so (laughs) we saw in the first episode of the season that when he first goes into the cantina he leaves baby yoda in the satchel and then we have another instance here where he's in the satchel and he goes flying mando keep baby yoda on your person i'm sure they have space baby bjorns just pack them right there on the front i'm actually Curious now, and I know that this is fiction and it doesn't matter. You have to suspend disbelief. But where is that floating bassinet? Good. Like, is Call. it in the... St- you know what I mean? Like, does it, like, fold down until it the might, pocket right? Size? That's what it seems like. <laughs> it just kind of, like... Go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. Although, I'm trying to think, right? Let's trace the bassinet. So, the bassinet might be in the ship. Because the last time we saw the bassinet was when he was talking to the informant. And then once they arrive on Tatooine, we never see it again. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I maybe guess they was, store it. Yeah, I guess he was in a little side satchel. Yeah, time. so Whatever. it's like there's the there's the floating bassinet, there's the satchel, baby Bjorn, there's the larger ship. You know, it's like any parent, new mm-hmm. parent. You have tons of contraptions in trying to take care of your baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. So he thwarts the would-be kidnappers. He 
you know, we see a really cool action scene. The guy, and it gets worse with Baby Yoda because this little guy takes Baby Yoda with a knife to his neck. <gasps> and to make matters worse, I was like, I'm. this is three minutes into the episode and I already want to stop watching because if anything happens to Baby Yoda. So he tells, he tries to barter with him, take anything, whatever. The guy wants his jetpack, oddly enough, out of everything that he has. Everybody wants to fly, no matter where you are. <laughs> right. And obviously we knew by him crashing and he remote controlled his jetpack. And if you know anything about Mandalorians, it's a good thing that he took the jetpack because then he just took it back by remote controlling that guy up into outer space. And, and then... Baby Yoda gets a kick out of it. Yeah, he loves Baby it. Yoda loves watching that guy mm-hmm. fly through space. So he has to walk back. Mm-hmm. And he goes straight to Peli in a cantina. Playing some cards with an ant. A, or a giant, like, praying mantis thing. <laughs> she actually calls him Dr. Mandibles, which is hilarious. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, that is Amy Sedaris. Whoever wrote that, but I feel like it was Amy Sedaris. I mean, hashtag blessed number two. Mm-hmm. I get her not in one, but in two episodes. Mm-hmm. I also feel like, because Peyton Reed was the guy that directed Ant-Man, the movie. Mm-hmm. And I know that these ant species have kind of showed up, but I feel like just a little bit that I feel like they put it in there as a nod to the director. That oh, did totally. It. I don't know. Maybe. That's awesome. Be. So she pretty much tells him, didn't work out. That wasn't a Mandalorian. Obviously, I have his gear. But she knows another informant that's right there in the same town, apparently. And so she tells him, oh, I'll tell you, or, you know, this ant guy will tell you if you pay his dues for this game. 500. Right. It was a whole trick. She knew she was going to win anyway. She got more money. <laughs> Love it. So it turns out that this informant is, we never get her name. We no. don't even know what species she is, but frog lady. Frog lady, mm-hmm. lizard lady, gecko gal. She's definitely a frog. Yeah, I mean, she does do jumping. Yeah, in the she's end, definitely but in the a frog. beginning, she's just a frog. <laughs> uh, so... They go back to Pelly's and they're just roasting that dragon meat. And she, I mean, Pelly apparently is super learned. She speaks frog lady language. Yeah, the Mandalorian didn't even know what language no. it was. And right. it was like something like this, like, uh, 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 like it was more back of the throat, not so much Tuscan Raider. Y'all, <laughs> <laughs> this is like Derek's wheelhouse because like in the past two seasons, he got to do accents and this one he gets to do different languages. Different languages, <laughs> baby. Uh, uh, uh. As soon as that language came on, I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I think my aura just becomes more positive and excited. <laughs> love it. And I also love that when they're when they're talking about where he has to take Frog Lady, she's like, yeah, I bet my life on it. And then he's like, when did you meet her? She was like, oh, like 10 minutes before you got here. <laughs> it's, it's part of like the the comedy of Star Wars and also what Jon Favreau does. That It's just it's so funny and mm-hmm. it's so lighthearted, but also just moves the story along. Yeah. You know, like why create this whole backstory like she grew up with her? It's like, no, I just I, I you know, I'd say my life on this this person. It's like you just met him 10 minutes mm-hmm. ago. What is in it for you, girl? Right. So we we find out that this frog lady, she has to take her eggs to be fertilized by her husband, which was on the estuary moon of Trask. And to get there, somebody has to, you know, take her there. But there's a trick. You can't do hyperspeed mm-hmm. in that. So it's like you have to travel by sublight. And we know Mando is wanted. He's on the run. And he has baby Yoda. So that's not really good for him. But there's a promise that apparently this husband of this frog lady has seen a Mandalorian there. Yeah. So, again, now we're chasing talks of a Mandalorian somewhere. Yeah. Cut to Baby Yoda for a second while this is all happening. So we first see Baby Yoda eyeing the crate dragon meat on the droid spit. And he's, like, sort of interested. Yeah. Here comes Frog Lady <laughs> with a backpack full of her eggs. And Baby Yoda's like, uh? <laughs> Excuse but me? We know that these eggs are the last of her, like, family line. Yeah. These are precious to her. But, you know, lest we forget, one of the more hilarious Baby Yoda scenes in season one is him chowing down on a frog. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. <laughs> He's probably like, oh, now that's a delicacy. He's right like, there. let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Give me those froggy nuggies. <laughs> Froggy nuggies. <laughs> so bad. So there's a catch with this. So he has to take this passenger to this moon, which is another in another system. It's a it's a neighboring system. 
and has to do it the easy, the slow way, mm -hmm. not the easy way. And it's it's odd because. In all of the Star Wars mythos, there's nothing that's ever said that, like, hyperspace or, you know, warp speed will harm anything. So it's interesting that they never really explain that, but I guess maybe because they're so delicate that... Yeah, I guess don't wanna... inertia, space inertia. I mean, I, ugh. as we see, as he's going through space to get there, he gets stopped by two X-Wing, you know, of the New Republic. And Mando is you know, rightfully kind of hesitant about it. Because if you remember in the first one, the, the episode, I believe it was five prisoners and maybe in five or six, he had to break people out of yeah. a New Republic prison. He doesn't know if he can trust them or not. So he tries to play it cool, tries to be like, oh, I don't have that. Oh, yeah, he's like, offline. it's broken, I think. I yeah, can't I find can't. it. <laughs> yeah, I knew I wasn't supposed to do a beacon, but I just can't. It's not working right now. But all the while... Baby Yoda still eyeing those eggs. <laughs> that little dude is in the back of the Razor Crest, yeah. chilling. Yeah, and like Mando's like dealing with all this nonsense, and Baby Yoda's like, dun, 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 dun. hello. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. He actually gets one of the eggs. He eats one of them. Yes. Prior to meeting these X-Wing pilots. And, like, when I indulge in a hard-boiled egg, I take one or two bites. Like, Baby Yoda full-on sucks those suckers down whole. I... I just like this is the first time I've ever had a problem with Baby Yoda. I I this agree. Is the last line of people for this frog lady, and he's just like, you know what? Fuck it. Can I also say this though, <laughs> frog lady? You're in a stranger ship who doesn't speak the same language of you, right? Why are you leaving your egg backpack in the back? Well, he left his baby down there. Maybe she was just like, oh, nursery. Here oh, we go. got it, got yeah, it, got yeah, it, got yeah. it. Got it. <laughs> so things get tense because they run the equivalent of his space plates, I guess, <laughs> right. these X-Wing people. And if you knew from the prior season, he's wanted. He has warrants out for his arrest. He freed people that the New Republic aren't too keen on him freeing in the past one. So as soon as their little X-Wing wings open, he's yeah. like, oh, shit, I got to get out of here. Yeah. So he flies down into this icy planet, tries to evade them. Really cool scenes. This is like another thing that people watch Star Wars for is these like dog fights and these amazing space races and chases and stuff like that. So it's really cool. And he escapes them with some doing really cool tricks. But just like the Millennium Falcon in the original trilogies that always gets fucked up and always mm -hmm. needs repairs. The Razor Crest is no exception in this no. case. He slams into this ice ledge in like this sort of cave situation. And you're like, oh, that's bad. But then guess what? Cricket, crack, crack, crack. Shablam. <laughs> they fall through the ice into another lower level. And it is not good. No, they, they all get knocked out, mm -hmm. apparently. Because then there's frost on them when they wake up. So you right. know time has passed. Yeah. As soon as like the next scene and all the frost is on there, you're like, Oh, that's not good. Mm -mm. And so he wakes her up. He's like, I'm going to go find your eggs. Obviously, you need to check on the baby. <laughs> baby Yoda <laughs> is munching on some hard-boiled frog eggs. Yes. Like, he wasted no time. He's like, you know what? I could go check on Mando, but I'm really hungry. Can somebody feed this baby? He's obviously so hungry. <laughs> I love these scenes, though, when Mando is clearly the dad. He literally, He's like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. He's like, can you not do that? What is wrong with you? Yeah. Baby Yoda woke up from his ice coma and was like, hungry for frog eggs. He was like, you know what? There's a giant hole in the side of the ship. I don't care where those yeah. frog eggs. I feel like we're really getting more like we're getting less Baby Yoda and more toddler Yoda now. He's like he's like verging on like adolescent like yeah does not listen. He's like terrible twos right, right now. <laughs> he's just wreaking havoc, walking around, eating things he shouldn't, just like being a real stinker. Yeah, and so he finds the eggs, and Frog Lady comes down there, and I mean, he just got knocked out for how many hours, and then he's like. It's going to be a while. Let's rest a little yeah, bit. Yeah, there's a giant hole in the ship. I mean, fix it or something. We need to chill. He, put, he puts a blanket up. <laughs> yeah, he puts Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's interesting because we see Frog Lady. She's trying to tell him something. Like, something on the canister is, like, reading something. He doesn't speak her language. We obviously don't speak her language. And he wakes up to the sound of Zero, that, that droid that was in the first one that almost killed Baby Yoda in the Razor Crest. And she rewired his vocal 
modulator. Tech genius. Right. Thank you. Surprise. Mm-hmm. And so she could speak to him. And she's pretty much being like, my eggs. Like, you need to follow through on your promise is a Mandalorian's word. You have to follow through with it. Or is that just kid stories? Yeah. I'm like, damn. Going straight for the groin. Yeah, she she let it she she laid it on thick. Yeah, but that resonated with him because that's when he was like, "Okay, I guess I'll stop napping mm-hmm. for most of this episode." <laughs> yeah, I mean, he really does. Like, I I feel like there's like a very innate sort of human side to him where it's like, "I'm tired, I want to rest," but then there's the Mandalorian side of him, right? And it's the honor of that code that keeps driving him through all of his actions. Mm-hmm. And when she lays it out there, he grabs his toolbox and he's like, "Fine." Mm-hmm. Yeah, he goes out there, he assesses the ship, shit's broken, shit's leaking, some blue fluid, I don't know what any of it means. It looks bad. I, yeah, I'm it's guessing. not good. There's wires. I stuff. could not survive in the Star Wars universe because it seems like if you're going to go on some sort of space adventure, you need to be a mechanic. Oh, yeah. I can't. Yeah, you need to be a polyglot. You need to be a mechanic. You also need to know how to drive. You yeah. like. I don't know where any of this stuff is. Like, I know where the store, like, it's Where's a lot of pressure. Where's the Ubers? Where's, Can I yeah. Get Uber? Yeah, we need Space Galaxy Lift. Right. And But then we see this interesting thing. It sounds like Baby Yoda starting to talk. Yes. Or forming some sort of speech because usually he coos or, like, makes some yeah. weird noises. This time it was like, there was, it sounded like words. You couldn't yeah. understand them, but. I guess Mando didn't really notice. <laughs> I don't know. I like Mando also has this thing where he talks to Baby Yoda as if Baby Yoda is a full grown adult. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what? What do you want? Go back inside. What's yeah, he's happening? Like, go, go away. Go go yeah. inside here. And Baby Yoda's still like, beep, boop, boop, or whatever. Yeah. And he, like, I guess, puts on some setting in his helmet and he can see Frog Lady's little warm footprints walking away from the ship. Yeah. Baby Yoda was being like old yeller and being like, Hey, guy, like, yeah, she's gone. Slash my egg food is that way. Yeah, <laughs> that's all he cared about. <laughs> yeah. He's like, she took my snacks. Can I get my <laughs> snacks back? <laughs> so he goes and finds her and super smart on Frog Lady's part. She found a hot spring. I don't know if she knew that, but maybe she was looking around while they were stuck there. Yeah. She finds a hot spring and she puts all her little eggs out in the hot spring. Mm. She's just having a nice little soak. Yeah. Keep them warm. S- super great. And then, again, after eating 50 million of these frog ladies' eggs, Baby Yoda's like, can I have this one? He's trying to grab him out of the little pool. <laughs> and Man- Mando's like, no. I will say this about frog lady. I mean, if I were a frog lady and I was carrying around the precious cargo of the last eggs of my line, I would know a precise amount of eggs I had in my jelly backpack. I felt like there was one moment, and I don't know if it was because she was noticing the temperature wasn't cool or whatever, but when they, after they crashed and she went down there and they were kind of sitting in there, it looked like she looked at the canister and then looked at Baby Yoda and Baby Yoda was just kind of staring at her. And I was like, she has to know how many eggs are in there. Well, then she's mad chill about it. <laughs> like, well, maybe she was saying something, but we couldn't oh, hear it. Oh, that's true. But also, I mean, I... She might be okay with, like, at least two surviving. Who knows? Right. <laughs> okay. She's like, just some. Yeah. <laughs> we lay yeah. a lot for a reason. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So, Baby Yoda, after he was denied another snack of these delicious... Now warmed. Yeah, now warmed. So, it's <laughs> definitely hard-boiled eggs for him. <laughs> he looks around. He's like, you know, what else can I eat? Because I'm starving. <laughs> he finds these, like, alien-looking egg things Mm -hmm. like literally from the movie alien yeah totally lined up in this cave he goes over there he's like this looks like food breaks one open starts eating out of it and in my mind and i think i audibly said i was like oh somebody's mom's gonna be mad Mm -hmm. next thing we know fucking air gog from harry potter comes out of the woodworks and starts chasing after him. Yeah, and it's like it's like some of the baby ones start hatching, and then some medium sized ones come, <laughs> and then large, and then gigantic mom comes, and it's like, oh dear. So they are like panicking, trying to get the rest of the eggs in her little canister. She even uses her frog tongue to grab her clothes off the mm-hmm. side of the ledge. There, gotta love a prehensile tongue. Heck I mean, yeah, it's amazing. So then they start bucking it through mm-hmm. the ice caves, and these spiders are everywhere, and they are gaining on them. And then we see Frog Lady go into full frog mode, and she is hopping like nobody's business to try and get away from them. I I do have to admit because at the beginning when you were like Lizard Lady, I thought she was a lizard 
too, until when she like grabbed her clothes with her tongue mm-hmm. and then started hopping like a frog. I was Heck like, yeah. oh, okay, she's a frog. <laughs> I'm actually a huge fan of Frog Lady. I actually really like her. Yeah, yeah. she's awesome. Yeah. She's super smart. She cares for her young. She's apparently chill. She's mysterious too. Quite mysterious. Yeah. And, and like she just is like always down for the adventure, it seems. Or she, she just has wants a mission. to. Yeah, she wants yeah. to just save her line. Yeah. That's all she wants to do. So they make it back to the ship after dodging all these spiders and the giant one is trying to get to him and Mando knocks the big mom out. Yeah. For what With we some saw. busy bombs. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in there. They get to the cockpit and <laughs> spiders are still everywhere. There's a lot of spiders. Web slinging, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was like, oh, there's no web. Then Webb starts shooting out of their mouth. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, things are not looking good. Smaller spiders get into the ship and you see Baby Yoda freaking out because mm-hmm. there's one on his head. And I was like, oh, no, my, oh my God, he's going to eat his brain. <laughs> how many times is he going to be in trouble? I'm like, if this is setting up for the rest of the season, I don't know how I can handle like six or seven more episodes. But if anything ever happens to Baby Yoda, the world will revolt. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but where has he been? <laughs> Baby Yoda? Yeah. <laughs> Because we just got the recent trilogy. You would think there would be a new Yoda. I don't know. I'm not saying anything will happen to him. I'm just curious where he's at. Don't do it. So, so, but we see another cool thing that Frog Lady. So it's interesting. We have three parents in this episode. We have Mando with Baby Yoda. We have Frog Lady with her eggs. And then we have Giant Spider Mom with her spider kids. Yeah. So it's interesting. We're seeing all these people trying to protect their young. When it's like, if you all just chill and just talk it out. Mm-hmm. He'll be fine. So after the spiders are on Baby Yoda, she saves him. She shoots all the spiders. Yeah, she gets off a little him. gun. She's like pew pew pew. So apparently she's a sharpshooter too. Like she's the greatest oh. character. Spinoff series, Frog Lady. Yeah. Let's have it. Let's <laughs> With do her it. Forty-seven young. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we get this interesting moment when everything looks like it's going bleak. Big Spider Mom wakes up after getting blasted. Starts ripping through the ship again, and then we hear blaster fire outside of the ship. Pew pew. And it turns out it's those X-Wing pilots. They saved him. Great. But then there's still that like, oh, what's happening? Yeah. He literally goes, am I under arrest? Yeah. But like the thing that's so weird about this situation is like they mention the episode The Prisoner and like you broke somebody out, all this stuff. You have this, this and this. But like these are trying times. Mm -hmm. We'll let you go. It's like I wish I could have known that like if I got pulled over, I could be like. It's trying times. Can you please let me go? But also in the... Yeah. <laughs> this is the equivalent of I'm like... very stressed. <laughs> yeah. This is the equivalent of like, it's just a warning, but get your taillight fixed. Right. Like, what? But my whole... Like, it's... They ran his plate, like we said, right? Like when they... And then they switched over to the other channel when we first saw them. And right. they spoke a bit. And they decided to attack him. What, do they keep running his plate and figure all this stuff out? Like, why even drive him into the ice planet in the first place? Well, to be fair, Mando ran. Well, so they pages. probably just like like warmed up their weapons as a precaution if he ran, which he did. But like that's the thing that like I liked because they are supposed to be the good guys. Mm-hmm. So they're like, don't make me shoot. Don't make me shoot. Like they didn't shoot the whole time. So it's like they weren't like trying to hurt him, but also like. Again, another situation where a nice conversation could have settled some things. Right. I mean, <laughs> that's the lesson in life. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the Mandalorian is teaching us through this episode. Exactly. Guys, just sit down and talk. Mm-hmm. It's okay. And it turns out it is okay because they end up, he's like, okay, well, can you help me? And they're like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> and I they mean, peace typical out. Typical patrol. Yeah. Like, they're just like, you know what? Like, well, you should be thankful that we're just letting you go. Yeah. Bite, we bite killed bite. all those spiders real good for you. They, mm-hmm. I mean, their gunk is all over your ship, but mm-hmm. that's your problem. Yeah. So he fixes his ship. And leaves. And leaves. And he says to Frog Lady, he's like, look, I'm just going to set a course for us to get there. I'm going to take a nap. Have a good one. She's holding on to her egg backpack real tight. And Baby Yoda gives it a little peek. He sees that she's keeping watch over it. So he missed out on his chance. But guess what? That little dude had one more little Frog Lady egg stowed away in his little sack. And he said, that little bitch. (laughs) She just saved his life. And he doesn't give a fuck. He don't care about nothing. Destroying her family. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my god. Hilarious slash awful. Yeah, but I mean, it it just for me, 
the the last episode felt Star Wars-y, but this one really felt mm. like Star Wars, even though this was probably like the least lore heavy mm-hmm. one, because I, I feel like this, they're going to have episodes like this where they're really for the general audiences. Like you don't need to know what's happening here. You don't need to know this. You just need to watch it and enjoy it. And I felt like that's what this episode was, but I mean, baby Yoda, you need to make better choices. Like, everybody a guy with a dark saber is after you you need to like stop eating people's kids don't burn your bridges <laughs> don't do uh, it boo uh, but he's still adorable and i'm really excited about this new sort of vocalization he has going on and mando is really delightful with him um he never scolds him he's just like just stop mm-hmm. um and maybe in the next episode we'll get more frog lady because they're still traveling to that moon yeah, I hope she sticks around for a little bit. I, I really I really liked her. I thought she was an interesting character, as we've seen in this show. I think they're very strong on making you connect or feel for a side character that just pops up. Yeah. I mean, we felt that way with Cardoon. Mm-hmm. And the first one, she was in it for quite a bit, but like you immediately fell in love with her. Yeah. And I feel like it's the same way with Frog Lady. I hope she has a name. I hope we get to see her meet her husband and they fertilize their eggs and it's all happily oh ever after. Oh my God, what a gorgeous scene it would yeah, be. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm more excited to see which Mandalorian this is. Mm-hmm. Like, is it going to be a Mandalorian that we know yeah. from the extended universe? Is it going to be a new one? Is it actually going to be a Mandalorian and it's just Timothy Oliphant again? <laughs> <laughs> I found some newer armor. Yeah. I'm just... Great. <laughs> But I'm I'm super excited. I I want to see where this goes. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm strapped in. I'm good. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. We were like vocally reacting to a lot of scenes in this, especially when their baby Yoda was involved. It's just so good. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's such good storytelling and character development. I agree. Totally here for it. I, I know I'm probably going to say this quite a bit in this season, but like this show is so well done. Mm-hmm. Like just. And I know it's by Disney and Lucas Films and all of that, so they have money up the butt. To spend in this, especially with the property that everybody's loving. But we're entering this new form of like TV where their movie quality, it's 100%. high budget. Like we're, we're so spoiled right now with Netflix pumping up their own huge productions. We're even seeing like we're wa- side note, we're watching The Unicorn. That's like a regular cable, oh. like a cable sitcom. Yeah. But it's very well done. Like even just like the 4K quality on that. Like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know how to handle this. Things are taking a step up. Now it is time for the special segment. Galaxy Guide, 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 Guide. (laughs) (laughs) So, of course, within this episode, there was that giant spider and that spider race, which I was calling uh, Snow Angela. Ooh, I like it. But it's actually referred to as the knobby white spider. (laughs) So it actually doesn't have an official name. I don't like that. No, it's gross. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But the knobby white spider was first seen in the concept art for The Empire Strikes Back. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so in the concept art, Luke Skywalker is next to it, which made us think that there was going to be some giant standoff between these knobby white spiders and Luke Skywalker. uh, But it never happened. Interesting. So it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. There have been other spiders in the Star Wars universe. Uh, One of them is the Krikna. And the Krikna appeared in Star Wars Rebels series. Good show, good um, show. But it's actually not the Nobby White Spider. Oh, Yeah, so it's this other separate race uh, that they created that actually like feeds off the fear of people and the doubt of people and you can't use the force against it. Yeah, yeah. Um, But in its original inception, the Nobby White Spider was actually part of the gnarl tree. So it, be- it was like a part of its root. It would break off. It would go off and be a predator. Um, totally gross. And in the concept art, it looks exactly like the Nobby White Spider that we just saw here. Oh, so John Favreau, like, or whoever decided, pulled from the archives of never seen Star Wars stuff. Exactly. Again, that's, exactly. that's amazing. And he plopped him on this ice planet and created these babies and this webbing. and Terrifying. Terrifying, yeah. yeah. So again, we see him taking the entire universe into, into his thought process when he's creating this. I hate it. I love it. Because it's so good. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, I just, I mean, that's the, that's the cool thing about this. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, 
that's why we watch Star Wars. We yeah. watch it for the cool creatures and the aliens and like just like the mind blowing. Like I never know what I'm going to run into at this point or whatever planet I'm in. Am I going to have to get inside of a Tantan? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but like I just I don't know. It's it's great. And I hate these spiders. I hope I never see them again. They were pretty, fun. pretty righteous, <laughs> especially when we thought the mother died and then it came back in that mouth full of insane teeth teeth was trying to bite through the hull of the razor crest (laughs) yikes yeah (laughs) yikes next episode hopefully we get to see who this mandalorian is or isn't maybe it's a mandalorian we know from one of the extended universe shows Mm. who knows maybe it's a frog lady's husband i don't i think she would know if he was a mandalorian (laughs) (laughs) yeah gross all right well (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to A Bite Of, artwork and editing by our own Noah. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at A Bite Of Pod and on Facebook at A Bite Of. If you have questions, recommendations, or just want to say hi, you can email us at abiteofpod at gmail.com. You can find us on all podcast platforms. Please be sure to rate and review to spread the word. Hope you join us next time on A Bite Of. Bye. Bye.